So in this video, we're going to try and talk about how to deal with energy conservation if there isn't any mass. Remember that our general equation for energy conservation is E0 equals E. And the two energies that we have are K equals 1 half mv squared and UG, gravitational potential energy, equals mgy. You'll notice that both of these things have mass in it. So whenever we set a kinetic energy or potential energy equal to um, some initial or final energy, there's going to be mass in every equation, and I can get rid of it. Let's see how that works uh, for an example. You drop your grandma from a 40-meter building. She lands in a pit of foam. How fast is she going before she hits the foam? Okay, here's the foam. Here's grandma. She's having a great time. Well, her hip's broken. That's why it's drawn like that. Um, and I'm going to say that the bottom of the building or the ground is zero. And if you can imagine, at the beginning, she would have no kinetic energy because her potential energy, I'm sorry, because her velocity in the beginning would be zero and she's dropped. Uh, so whatever the initial potential energy is, I don't know her mass, so I can't put a number to it, but whatever it is, I know that it's all potential energy in the beginning. At the end, at a height of zero, I'll have no, or your grandma will have no potential energy. And so then I know that the kinetic energy, whatever it was in the beginning, is all of the energy. So this is just an expression of E naught equals E, like we said before, energy conservation, where I'm setting Yu-Gi-Oh, the energy in the beginning, equal to K, the kinetic energy at the end. Now if I set this equation, MGY naught, inside of UG, because the potential energy is always MGY, and then k I replace with n one half mv squared. You'll notice that there's an m on both sides, and now I can solve for the velocity without the mass. Two times g equals y naught, or times y naught equals v squared. So the velocity is the square root of two g y naught. When I plug in two times use ten meters per second squared times forty, I will get. 28.3 meters per second. So that is the velocity of grandma right before she hits the foam pit. Okay, let's say you throw grandma from a 40 meter building with a velocity of 2 meters a second, but now you throw her at an angle of 30 degrees and she lands on a trampoline that is 2 meters tall. We want to figure out how fast grandma's going before she hits the trampoline. Oh boy. Okay. Here's the trampoline. Oh yeah. Here's grandma. Now grandma has been thrown with a velocity v naught two meters per second squared at this angle. Oh my gosh, what are we gonna do? Well, in this case, I think about what I have in the beginning. I'll have potential energy because I'm at a height of 40 meters. Set this equal to zero, and then the height of the trampoline. We're going to set that equal to two. Okay, so I have potential energy, Yu-Gi-Oh, because she's at a height of 40 meters. And also, there will be some kinetic energy, because Grandma was thrown with a velocity of two meters per second in the beginning. So I'll call that k naught. Now, at the end, here's what is frustrating. At the end, Grandma is obviously going to have some kinetic energy, but because she's at a height of two meters, she will also have some potential energy. So you would write UG plus K. Rather than choosing that the ground is zero, though, I'm going to make a slight adjustment. I'm going to go ahead and say that the top of the trampoline is zero. That would make the ground negative two if for some reason I needed it. And then the initial height, instead of 40, I would make it 38. If I do that, then I can say that at the trampoline, there's no gravitational potential energy. And I can just set those two energies equal to the final energy at the end. All right, now I'm going to replace these with equations. mg y naught plus 1 half mv naught squared equals one half m v squared. Okay, as you can see, there's an m in everything. 
and I want to know how fast grandma's going before she hits the trampoline, so V. So I'll have G, Y naught, plus one half V naught squared. I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of this 1 half, so 2. That's going to be V squared. Then I'll take the square root of both sides. Um, and I'm actually just going to factor this 2 in so that what I get is the square root of 2G, why not, plus 2 times that 1 half, that'll just be V naught squared. And you'll notice this looks a lot like our ain't got no time equation rearranged to solve for the final velocity. Um, and when I plug in my numbers, 2 times 10 meters per second squared times, now I would use 38, not 40. And my initial velocity, I actually use 2, and I don't worry about sine or cosine because the kinetic energy is only interested in the, the whole magnitude of the velocity. So you don't even need this 30 degrees. You could solve it um, using motion analysis in that 30 degrees, but for us, energy analysis does not require that we use it. That's kind of why energy analysis is so fast and awesome. Okay, so when I put all this in my calculator, I'm gonna get 27.6 meters per second. Great, moving right along. You throw a baseball from a building of height h, ooh, with an initial velocity v naught, ooh, at an angle of theta, ooh, drive an expression for the speed of the ball before it hits the ground in terms of v naught and h, ooh, and any natural constants, ooh. Well, this is just the exact same problem that we did, but now it's AP style. Here's v naught, there's some angle theta that it makes. It's at a height of h, I'll set this to zero so that I can you know, easily see the initial height is h, the final height is zero. And it wants to figure out what is the velocity of the ball V here. Well, I'll do energy analysis. And think about how in the beginning I have potential energy due to gravity because of that height H. Then I'll have uh, kinetic energy in the beginning because of that velocity V naught. And the energy that I have at the end, as long as my ground is zero, I'm not throwing the baseball into a trampoline or anything, I can just say it turns into all kinetic energy. Now I replace these equations. Instead of mg, why not? I'm going to do mg times h because I can say that my initial height is h. We're just calling it h. Plus one half mv naught squared because my initial kinetic energy depends on the initial velocity. And then this equals one half mv squared. Okay, the AP test wants me to get rid of mass because it's not one of the terms. And then I multiply both sides by 2 to gh plus 1 half v naught squared equals v squared. This is exactly what we had last time, except now I'm using h instead of y naught uh, or y. And I can factor this in. Take the square root, and boom. I have v naught, h, and any natural constants, aka little g. Good job. Easy problem. Andrew Reynolds, a skateboard is going 12 meters a second on flat ground when he comes up to a huge hill. He's a skateboarder. How high up does the, the hill does Andrew Reynolds go before coming back down? Okay, so I'm actually going to draw this with a box because it is a very common problem on the AP test where a box is shot up to some hill. You have this initial velocity. V naught, 12 meters a second. And they want you to figure out what is the height to which it rises, assuming that you know the initial height is zero. Well, here's how I set this problem up. E naught equals E. And I recognize that in the beginning, as long as I say that the ground it starts at is zero, there's no potential energy, so no Yu-Gi-Oh! And instead, there's all kinetic energy from that 12 meters per second of velocity. Then at the end, the box will reach its highest point when its velocity is zero, because that's right before it comes back down. So I would have no kinetic energy and all potential energy. Then I can substitute in my equations, 1 half mv naught squared. And this would be mg times y, where y is what we want to find. That's the height. You could call it h if you wanted to. And I have an m in both sides of the equation, so I cancel it. 
and in order to find y, I just divide both sides by g. So I'm going to make this a little pretty, p naught squared on top. The 1 half I'm going to put down on the bottom of my fraction to g. Okay, so that's the equation for finding the height. And this would be 12 meters per second, the whole thing squared, so 144 over 2 times 10 meters per second squared, or 20. So 144 over 20 is going to give you 7.2. So that's how high up the skateboard or our box goes. And let's do another one. Ooh, a block, a block of mass m slides from rest down a frictionless track as shown below. Derive an expression for the velocity of the block at point p. Okay, well, let's start there. So basically, I'm going to do e naught equals e. And in the beginning, I start from rest. So, sorry. So yeah, uh, in the beginning, you have all potential energy. Um, it says it starts from rest, so no kinetic energy. Yu-Gi-Oh! Okay, then at the end, well, here's where it's kind of weird. Basically, this drawing is trying to tell you that the radius of the loop is half the height of the box that it started at. So you could say that here you have potential energy plus kinetic energy. Or if you're smart, you can go ahead and say that this height represents zero. And you started from a height of h over Two. I'm going to do that. I'm going to say that I started from a height of h over 2, and therefore I only have kinetic energy at the end. So my initial potential energy would be mg times h over 2. I'll put that in parentheses because I know how much you like parentheses. And the kinetic energy would be 1 half mv squared. m's cancel out. Oh, and guess what? These 2's actually cancel out. So I'll get g h equals v squared. So the velocity is the square root of gh. <laughs> Not grr. Uh, and yeah, that's that's the expression for part one. If the initial angle, or sorry, if the initial height was 10 meters, then you would find the velocity by doing the square root of 10 times 10. Wow, I picked good numbers for this. And that, of course, is going to give you 10 meters per second. Congratulations. You're so smart. One more. Oh, never mind. None more. Congratulations. You did it. You're so smart. 